Have you ever wondered what might happen when you mix silicone with cement? At first glance, this combination may seem pointless, even strange or incompatible, but the truth is that it holds surprising potential. In this video, you'll learn a simple yet powerful formula that many people overlook, and that can be extremely useful in many everyday situations, especially when it comes to quick, strong, and durable home repairs. Let's start with the main ingredient, silicone. Have a tube of silicone handy, preferably the neutral type, which is more versatile. If possible, also use a manual silicone applicator, the one with a trigger that allows you to precisely control the flow. After that, begin extracting the silicone, directing it into a container. Here I'm using a regular cup, but I highly recommend using a metal container, like an aluminum or brass pot, because it needs to withstand the next ingredient in the mixture, the solvent. The solvent is essential for altering the texture of the silicone, making it more malleable and easier to mix. You can use thinner or another type of silicone-compatible solvent. Add an amount proportional to your needs to the container. If you're making a small application, don't overdo it. Please share your thoughts and comment on where you're watching from, your city or country. It's always amazing to see where this content is reaching, to meet the people who are part of this community, and of course, this helps me produce content that's increasingly aligned with you, wherever you are in the world. You'll need three nylon cable ties, also known as cat ties, and a thin wooden or metal stick. Attach the cable ties to the end of the stick so that they're spaced apart, like the blades of a propeller. This small, improvised device will function as a mixer, attached to the tip of a standard drill. With the whisk ready, place it inside the container. Now, simply operate the tool carefully, keeping the speed low at first. You'll notice that as the whisk rotates, the silicone begins to dissolve and transform into a more homogeneous gel. This process may take a few minutes, but it's essential to ensure the quality of the mixture. Always remember safety. Wear safety glasses to avoid splashing into your eyes. Now comes the final ingredient in the formula, cement, which gives the mixture its rigidity, firmness, and strength once applied. Use regular cement, the kind used in construction, renovations, and minor structural repairs. Gradually add a few heaping spoonfuls directly to the silicone and solvent mixture, being careful not to overmix. Using a spatula or spoon, stir slowly and steadily to thoroughly incorporate the powder into the liquid base. Gradually, the mixture will gain body, density, firmness, and a more uniform and moldable consistency. Continue adding cement gradually, patiently, and carefully, until the mixture reaches a creamy, thick, homogeneous, and slightly sticky texture, similar to a strong, high-strength glue that adheres firmly to a variety of surfaces. This is the ideal point for application, ensuring a durable, strong, and visually uniform result after complete drying. Now that the compound is ready, let's put it to work. Choose a damaged area of the house. In this example, we'll apply it to a crack in the concrete floor. The first step is to prepare the surface. Remove any dust, loose debris, or dirt. If possible, lightly dampen the area with a little water. This helps improve the adhesion of the compound. Once everything is clean, grab a putty knife. If you have a flexible silicone one, even better, as it allows for a smoother, more professional finish. Apply the putty directly to the crack, pressing lightly so it penetrates the crevices. Then, smooth the surface to make it even. The end result is impressive. The mixture hardens over time, becoming highly resistant to water, temperature fluctuations, and natural wear. It can be used not only for cracks in concrete floors, but also for wall cracks, holes in roofs, tile joints, and even as an emergency sealant for concrete slabs. Furthermore, this homemade putty has an incredible advantage. Its initial flexibility allows it to fill gaps more effectively, while its gradual hardening ensures long-lasting durability. If you liked this tip and want to continue learning practical, simple, and smart solutions like this, don't forget to watch the next video on the channel. It will feature an even more impressive, useful, and surprising technique that can completely transform the way you solve simple problems around the house, using few materials, low costs, and plenty of creativity. Until then, thank you so much for watching. Share it with anyone who might be interested and get to work putting it all into practice. Have you ever imagined what could happen by combining two ingredients as common as silicone and gasoline?
Well, know that this mixture can produce a surprising, almost unbelievable result, yet practical and effective, known only by a few people. It all starts with the exact measurement of the components. First, separate the silicone, the same one you can easily find in hardware stores. Measure 20 grams using a scale, placing the product in a glass container, but you can also use any other container resistant to the action of chemicals. 20 grams of silicone may be enough for many small projects, especially when it comes to crafts or simple repairs. Then, set aside 40 milliliters of regular gasoline. If you prefer, you can use additive gasoline. The result will be the same. The proportion is always the same. For every 20 grams of silicone, add 40 milliliters of gasoline. Now to achieve a perfect mixture, you will need a very simple but effective accessory, a wooden stick. With two nylon clamps fixed at the tip, you create a small improvised propeller. Insert this adapted rod into the drill and use it to mix the silicone with the gasoline. Gradually, the mixture will acquire a unique color and a surprising consistency, becoming a very soft mass, ready to revolutionize everything you knew about homemade waterproofing products. It's wonderful to have you here, following this content, so that we can get to know each other better, share in the comments which city and country you are watching from. Also, feel free to tell us what your current profession is. Your participation is very important to us, and I am excited to learn a little more about you. Don't forget to interact as your comment makes all the difference in our community. The time has come to apply and test the functionality of this solution. With everything ready, the first experience will be done on a tire. Just dip a brush or a spatula into the mixture and apply two generous coats on the clean and dry tire. Wait a few seconds between each coat to ensure better adhesion and product efficiency. The whole process is easy, quick, and anyone can do it. Just a little care is needed to ensure good results. If you are not yet part of our community, this is the perfect time to subscribe to the channel. Here, you will find relevant content, exclusive tips, and fresh news, always specially designed for you. Don't miss any updates and stay informed about everything that happens. After feeling the texture of the silicone, I decided to try it on other materials. I took a square piece of wood, like the one you probably have at home saved after a renovation or repair. Again, I applied the solution in two coats, using the same method. Brush on one layer, wait a few minutes, and repeat. To ensure maximum safety and hygiene, I always suggest wearing gloves, avoiding direct contact of the product with the skin, as both gasoline and silicone can be harsh. But I didn't stop there. The next test would be even more challenging, a simple sheet of paper. Paper is notoriously vulnerable to water, making it ideal to check if the waterproofing really works. I proceeded in the same way. Two layers, patience between them, and of course, care when handling, since paper is more delicate. Once the application is done, it is essential to respect the ideal drying time. Let the treated objects rest for at least 12 hours in a dry and ventilated place. This time is sufficient to ensure the complete evaporation of the gasoline, leaving only the protective silicone layer fixed on the surface of each material. Now comes the most awaited moment, testing the efficiency of the solution in practice. I sprayed water over the three materials, clearly marking the treated and untreated areas to make a fair comparison. On the piece of wood, the result was striking. Where the application was made, the water slides off without penetrating, leaving the surface completely dry. The secret lies precisely in the silicone, a powerful waterproofing agent that, when dissolved in gasoline, facilitates and speeds up both the application and drying.
If you have made it this far, it's because you are enjoying the content, right? So don't waste time and leave your like right now. This way you support the channel and ensure that you will receive even more news and interesting tips directly in your feed. In the paper test, the difference was even more evident. While the untreated area absorbed the water, becoming soaked and easily tearing, the protected zone remained intact, as if nothing had happened. This simple combination of silicone and gasoline has enormous potential, whether to waterproof materials like wood and paper or, especially, to protect tires. In the case of tires, waterproofing can prevent premature drying, keep the rubber flexible, and extend the component's lifespan, helping with the safety and durability of your vehicle, bicycle, or any other equipment that has rubber tires. Moreover, the cost benefit is unbeatable. It is an economical idea, accessible to everyone, and extremely versatile. Imagine how many objects you can protect from the effects of water and moisture at home. Gardening tools, wooden benches in the yard, cardboard pieces for storage, and even shoe soles on rainy days.